Science of Aliens at the San Diego Air and Space Museum. This charming guy is a Vogon. He's one of the lead characters from The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The Science of Aliens was already a proven exhibit that had been in London and it hit Miami and it hit Quebec. When our director saw it, our, our president CEO, saw that there was science available and a fun coating of Hollywood on the outside. Something that was durable and really good. So we've got this thing for a limited time where we have all of the science and all of the draw of what we think of as aliens on the outside. It's really cool. And those who love hard science fiction will love this too because uh, the, the, most, the best science fiction is usually fairly good science speculation. So there's something in this for everybody. If you liked the Dune series, the idea of scientific ecology being stuffed in there, you'll like this exhibit. It's not just credible, it's fun. There, there's a couple of worlds out here before there was Avatar that will actually pique your curiosity and make you want to learn more about xenobiology. So when we've shown you pictures, they're either alleged to have been doctored up or hard to explain or taken through reflective surfaces. Reflective and refractive surfaces are responsible for a lot of UFO sightings. Not to say that they aren't real. All UFO means is an identified flying object. Here's a good one, an owl, which has been taken in three-day photography to sort of transform into an alien face with the same characteristics. Something that you see in the dark only vaguely or only half-lit might actually have an explanation on Earth, which is very difficult to accept when you're scared and frightened out of your woods. There are stranger things on Earth, Horatio. Here's a squid. They call it the vampire squid because when it protects itself by turning its tentacles more or less inside out, it's got toothy appendages that make it look like an alien. There are things here on Earth which to an alien visitor who might be like you or I would look creepy beyond belief, even an octopus. You are here. This is your Milky Way seen side on. And you, as the Monty Python song says, are just a little tiny planet in an outer spiral arm of this great, vast, boiling, roiling pinwheel of stars. Out there are billions of opportunities for life. You know it, we know it. The scientific speculation, not science fiction, but fiction for scientists. With the help of the University of Cambridge, University of or Cambridge University, and uh, University of Leeds, also got some help from NASA Ames and SETI and other folks to put together notional worlds that might actually support life, either not as we know it, or similar to what we know it, carbon based, but under conditions that are different from what we find on Earth. Two ways they looked at that. One, if you could have a planet orbiting close to a red dwarf, that is a smaller, very highly radiating star, that was dimmer than Earth, perhaps if it was tidally locked, you could keep temperatures there conducive to carbon-based life. With that in mind, they designed the notional world of Aurelia, a world that orbits a red dwarf that might have jungle-like conditions on one side and a permanent ice age on the other. This one is called Blue Moon. So instead of a rocky planet, circling a G-class star, perhaps you might get a binary star system and have enough gas giant circling so that the moon could support life. This section is about communication, not just what might be possible, which in fact, in scientific terms, is hard, it's difficult, it's acknowledged that way. So a little bit on, hey, is there intelligent life out there? And if so, how do you communicate? And what are the obstacles to overcome to do this? School groups are already interested uh, and they've been calling, but it's on in this way because it's not all the art and science and engineering students that we've had with earlier ones. Here we're going to have humanities folks, even music folks, and of course the hard science teachers, biology teachers, physics, and that sort of thing, who will find a little bit of everything in this. Come and see us. The aliens are out there in here at the San Diego Air and Space Museum.